That's right. We're on live. We're going to get this thing done one way or another. What's up to y'all? I visions where the motto is we motivate the blind stimulate your mind and welcome all kind today I will be speaking with a return guest with a different uh, situation going I will be speaking with Aaron and um, I'm gonna allow him to tell you all what he is uh, doing now and a little bit about himself but in the meantime I want you all to subscribe you new you newcomers please subscribe to third eye visions and um hit the like button make sure to comment and also make sure to share the videos because that's the only way that we can get this information out there right right aaron absolutely yeah no don't keep it to yourself especially uh with this topic here and uh we're going to discuss the uh his uh, book which is entitled the bubonic reorder is that correct is that? yes okay. yeah, that's it Okay, cool. Now, with that being said, before I do that, um, let me tell you all that I do have some t-shirts out. If you want to get a t-shirt, like the one that I'm wearing right now, hopefully you can see it, a blind man trying to show you. Let me know and I will definitely take care of that. But in the meantime, let's jump into the business at hand and bring on my guest, uh, Aaron. Hello. How, how you doing? I'm doing great. How are you today? Uh, I'm doing fine. Doing fine. It's the first of the month. July 4th is coming right around the corner. You celebrate uh, 4th of July? We are having a big uh, party down on Cape Cod. So, big. This is the first time the family's all getting together after the pandemic. So, okay. You're not going to invite me to Cape Cod? I like to go. That's a, that's, a, that's a long drive for you. Well, I mean, I could, I mean, I could, I, I could get some people to come and, and drive me down there. So, if I get somebody to drive me down there, am I invited? Sure. <laughs> all right cool just so you know that he's invited me. so with that being said uh first off just briefly uh introduce yourself uh let the people know who you are sure uh i'm aaron spelker i'm a, a blind individual newly blind actually in the last couple of years and uh on here to talk to you today about the book that i've just released called the bubonic reorder as you mentioned which is a book that i wrote after i went blind so it was kind of a you know a, a piece that i used for a little bit of therapy after i went blind you know needed something to do and so i decided to sit down and write the book that i had been contemplating writing for about seven years and never really got around to doing but once i went blind and had some time on my hands i i kind of motivated myself to uh to start writing it and uh wrote it from uh about may of 2019 to december 2019 uh, really kind of sat down every day for three to six hours a day writing writing this book that i have been really contemplating over the you know the five years prior to that uh, you know dabbling in it uh, but you know really kind of used my blindness as this kind of catalyst to really write the book i had uh i wanted to um kind of take charge of my blindness if you will and find something that i could you know, accomplish as a blind person that I had, you know, not been able to accomplish as a sighted person. Kind of, you know, change that narrative into uh, something positive, if you will. Great analogy. I like. I like how you said take charge, and that's what we are. We, as visually impaired individuals, we have uh, uh, people who are hearing impaired, people who have who have, who have other uh, forms of impairment. Take charge of it. Don't let that impairment control you. And you, you sort of. Um, answer the question uh that, that i was gonna ask you just briefly tell everybody uh how you lost your sight you mentioned that you were blind so we're gonna get that out of the way so just tell briefly what happened what caused you to go on to yeah that. sure um so in the end of february of 2019 i was on a trip to cancun with my wife for our 20-year wedding anniversary and we went down to the beach uh you know taking the ocean and the sand and a big gust of wind blew uh sand up into my eyes and um you know, I, I kind of spent the rest of the week in Cancun just thinking my eyes were irritated from, you know, having sand in them. But that sand had a very uh, virulent uh, bacteria in it. And so when I got back to the United States, I actually got admitted to the Tufts Medical Hospital in, here in Boston for three and a half weeks in their intensive care unit while they tried to fight the infection that was in my eyes. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, kind of when I left the hospital, um, you know, they were able to save the eyes, but the, the vision was all kind of messed up and mangled. So I really kind of just have some light perception now, you know, shadows and light, um, but I don't really see. So over that span of, you know, three weeks in the hospital, I kind of went in as a sighted person and left as a blind person. So wow. I, kind of, yeah, I, know, was, I, know, I know that was a, a, a very... Uh, a difficult adjustment to, to, to have to do something like yeah. that. But, but yeah, I mean, it was, yeah, it was, it was shocking, you know, it was, it was kind of all of a sudden and, you know, that's where I kind of, uh, you know, afterwards kind of, you know, slipped into a depression, you know, I was kind of mourning all those things that I, you know, no longer would see or no longer accomplish or do. And I was kind of, uh, you know, spiraling uh, a little bit. So, uh, you know, a couple, couple months after I lost my sight, um, you know, I got lucky to have you know this kind of event happen, this catalyst happen that kind of made me say, "Look, I'm gonna I'm gonna take charge of this situation, and I right. am going to accomplish something and be productive, um, and you know not not let blindness you know be a barrier to you know accomplishing something that I'd always wanted to do, which was to write this book." So, um, and that's what this channel is all about, and whatnot. Just you know, take charge. Now, with that being said, um. As my audience may well know, I've come across uh, individuals who are vision impaired. You know, they have various uh, uh, professions. Some may be into sports. Some may be doing this and that. But a lot of t I have let met, over the years, I've met a lot of uh, um, authors and things like that. Some who do it for a profession to get paid and everything. Some do it for pastime. So uh, as far as you writing this book, which is entitled The Bubonic Reorder, is this uh, something you want to you doing as pastime? Are you trying to make a career out of being, being becoming an author? What's the situation? Yeah, it's uh, it's more of a pastime um, in that uh, I had a, a career in financial services, uh, you know, you know, a math investments type of guy. And back in 2014, when I originally thought up of this idea, um, it, it, it kind of came from I, I read these two articles back to back, which was one was about how 10 percent of the European population is immune to HIV because they have this mutated CCR5 protein, which is the protein that HIV needs to latch onto to infect a host. And the scientists determined that that came, you know, that mutation formed at the end of the 14th century from survivors of the bubonic plague. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of like one article that I read. And, and right about the same time, I read this article about more modern uh, viruses like Ebola and SARS. And what the article was really kind of talking about is those spread differently than you know historical plagues uh, or uh, historical viruses that kind of went from village to village town to town now with our modern technology uh you know cars and pl planes and trains and boats you know you can be halfway around the world in a matter of hours and so viruses don't stay contained they can be you know hot spots that Definitely. pop up si simultaneously in multiple points Definitely. so um, I had read those two articles and then, you know, believe it or not, I had a couple of days later a dream that really ended up being the outline of the book. Now, and wow. be and now before you go into that, yeah. uh, are, are, are you a type of person that's kind of like, um, I don't want to use the word fascinated, but for, for lack of, of better words, with, with like how, how um, germs are spread or just, you know, you know, or tr you know, in terms of transmitting from one place to the next or how, they, what, what caught where they created are you that type of person that want you know that that's that's intrigued with that and try to figure out or you just happen to you know i know you're gonna go into your dream but you just happen to you know to just come up with something like that well i guess sort of tangentially in that i am uh, a big post-apocalyptic book reader right uh, I'm, I'm always reading about disasters so they're not always plagues but there'll be like you know a meteor strike or zombies or whatever you know that's kind of when I sit around and you know beach read, those are usually uh, disaster type of books or, or what I'm reading. So, you know, not specifically about viruses, but you know, there is definitely kind of a dark post-apocalyptic uh, spin uh, that I enjoy reading about. Um, so, yeah, when I had the dream and it played out like almost like a movie, um, it was so compelling uh, that I said, "Oh, you know, I got to take some notes on that." That was really an, an interesting dream. I had never written, you know, written down my dream before. Mm. Uh, and, you know, just kind of over the, that was back in 2014. So over the next five years before I went blind and actually started writing it, you know, it's just kind of when I had an hour here or two hours there, I'd sit down and, you know, write a paragraph or do some research about, you know, different things, you know, viral spread or, uh, you know, 
there's some military stuff in the book so you know about the military and how they work and operate and uh you know so i just kind of dabbled in kind of doing the research just figuring you know one day when i retire 20 years from now i'll, I'll sit and you know as a hobby write this book mm. um you know i always kind of figured i had all this time in the world to do it um, and then like i said when i went blind i was i was in the state like in mourning like oh well i you know now i'll never write that book because i'm blind and i really needed to kind of pick myself up and dust myself off and say, you know, why, why am I letting that be a barrier for myself? You know, right. it, it can be done. Um, you know, that, that kind of catalyst for me was I had a technician come from the mass commission for the blind mm. to my house to load, you know, screen reader software onto my computer so I could start working with it. And that technician ended up being a fully blind individual. And he got on my computer and he surfed the internet and he downloaded stuff and he installed things and went into my settings and changed things. And, mm. and uh, it was really kind of, you know, an epiphany for me, you know, here's a guy fully blind who is super productive and expert in what he does, better at it than I ever was at computers as a sighted individual. And so why am I letting blindness be a barrier for me? You know, this guy clearly didn't let, let blindness be a barrier for him. So pretty much the next day, you know, I started using that screen reader software and I pulled up the notes that I had, you know, cobbled together over five years about the book and, mm. you know, started sitting down and writing it as kind of a, you know, a therapy and, you know, kind of a, you know, each, each sentence I wrote, each, you know, paragraph I completed, each chapter I finished was just kind of, I am accomplishing something, I am moving forward. So it was a, it was a great kind of therapy tool for me yeah, uh, yeah. to kind of overcome, you know, what was kind of a sudden tragic event for myself. Definitely, definitely. That, that's, that's a great, great story. So um, I, 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 I was talking with you off camera the other day, and uh, I was, you know, the, the the information that you were giving me about your book and what's in it, and and and, and talking about the the, the uh, diseases that, that are spreading throughout, sort of made me think about the um, COVID nineteen situation, and it kind of like coincides. Uh, do you c comment on that, and in, in terms of how? Uh, your book kind of like um, you know brings out or, or just you know kind of like focuses on what's what's going on uh, uh, today. Yeah, it's it's so this book actually got finished in December of 2019. So it, right. it got finished before the outbreak started. And if I do say so myself, it is crazy predictive. Right. Um, and it, it, it's kind of a frustrating thing, you know, when when I watched the news as the pandemic was outbreaking and everyone's like, oh, we you know we never saw this coming. I said, you know, if, you know, anybody who spent any time doing any sort of research, mm -hmm. they also saw it coming because I read all sorts of stuff that talked about how these viruses spread, where they're most likely to come from, what are going to be the touch points and the problems when an outbreak like this uh, arises. And I put that all in my book and it all was very similar to what wow. uh, what occurred. Um, so so as I watched the news and like, oh, we, don't, we never knew this was gonna come or never expected this. Uh, I, I just said, you know, you never bothered to open your eyes and look because this has all been out there. Scientists have been talking about this, uh, you know, have been talking about what the problems would be, you know, where, where the touch points. I mean, even things like, you know, shortages of food, um, shortages of uh, medical supplies, uh, you know, the, the rapid spread because you know as you kind of have an outbreak in china and you know people get on planes or people right. might you know there's a lot of farming migration that happens into china into you know the other land attached countries you know that that quickly can spread a virus i mean it was all right there uh for me to you know research and write down you know uh, five years before the event ever happened um and i'm glad so, you i'm glad you brought that up because you know when someone reads your book i don't want you know uh, they don't you, the, them to say, well, he, you know, this this book's just like, oh, he wrote this after, uh, yeah. you know, you know the uh, the the COVID nineteen spread has come out. So I'm glad, and that's just very interesting to know that you had uh, like, you know, a premonition sort of, if you will, of uh, something that that that, ha that uh, you know has happened now that you thought about a couple of um, years beforehand. Um, yeah, I, Anthony, I'll tell you that every time I watch the news, it was like a dagger to my heart because every like pretty much every seed of my book that dealt with the virus played out on the news and i'm like oh, wow. come on <laughs> now off off the top you don't have to go into too, too much detail just a couple of sentences in terms of what do you uh, uh about what's going on today with the with the uh, covid 19 and different strands and all that what's your opinion considering the fact that you've written your book on um which is entitled again the um bubonic reorder what's your opinion about that you don't have to go into too much detail yeah i mean um 
again, I mean, as I said before, it's not terribly surprising. Um, I, you know, the signs have been there uh, that this kind of outbreak, you know, could happen and probably will happen again. Um, you, you know, we it is it is the, the kind of tools that have been used for most outbreaks are isolation and containment, and in this modern world, it is really hard to do that. So, you know, we got to really think about uh, a different approach to monitor these things, to be on top of outbreaks as soon as they happen. Um, you know, there had been some changes in budgets that had, you know, stopped some of the um, science teams that would look into hot spots and potential, you know, places for outbreaks um, that kind of, you know, let let this one probably go further along and, and caught a little later than it should right. have been caught. Right, right, exactly. Um, and you know the the delta virus uh, variant that is ha happening right now i mean um you know a lot of uh, mentioned in my book is you know talks about mutations in a little bit of a different way but does talk about how mutations can happen um and you know if we don't really get it under control we're just going to have kind of a different problem um you know further down the line and hopefully some of the vaccines we have now will you know provide us you know better protection than no protection that we had before but um it'll be a persistent problem i mean even if you look at you know, going way back, you look at the plague, you know, the, the plague dogged uh, society for 500 years. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when it first broke out in the 14th century, it showed up every six to 10 years for the next 200 years. And then we had a, an outbreak in you know the 1600s and another one in the 1800s. So there was a little bit of spread there, but I mean, it, it went on for a long time because they really had no science to stop it and control it and, and, and vaccine it. So uh, well, if we don't get it under control, we-, we right. You know, we got to watch that we're going to have reoccurrences. Hopefully, yeah, they, they, well, they seem to have gotten it under control, or, you know, but there's still some strands that are still coming up. And I, I studied, I looked up a little bit about the bubonic plague and show, and it told how it killed over like in the, uh, over a, a third of, of the European population yeah. in the 14th century. So it had to be a, a very, uh, <laughs> a strong type of uh, virus, you know. Yeah, and, yeah, they say, you know, a third to 50% in four years. Wow, that's a lot. Now, getting back to your book, uh, uh, The Bubonic uh, Reorder, what, you know, don't go to too much in detail. What can they expect to uh, uh, to find in your book as they read? Yeah, it, it really kind of has like two parts. So the one part, the first part is about a family who is really on the front lines at the start of the bubonic plague mm -hmm. in the 14th century. And it's really kind of about their uh, struggle for survival as mm -hmm. the outbreak, you know, first comes into play. Okay. Um, the second part, uh, again, believe this or not, uh, happens in the year 2020 and is about an outbreak of a new virus that is coming out of China. And it follows kind of two people. One, a group of scientists who are trying to get their handle around this new virus and how to deal with it. And then the other is about um, a retired uh, army staff sergeant whose family is kind of directly impacted by the outbreak of the virus and kind of, uh, you know, their struggle for survival. And then that kind of uh, ties into, you know, uh, the parallels of, you know, the family in the 14th century as they, they struggled for survival and how, you know, similar those struggles are, even though they're, they're 700 years apart from each other. Okay. Don't give them too much. Don't we? Yep. Cause we want them to go get the book, which is yeah, entitled yeah. the, the bubonic reorder yep. by my man, Aaron Spelker. Um, where can they find the book and um, uh, when is it coming out? Right yeah, there. so it, it actually came out uh, oh, on uh, June 23rd, so it's been out about a week. Okay, cool. It is available on Amazon and uh, Barnes and Nobles. Uh, it is available by both paperback and ebook. Okay. Um, well, okay, I like that. I'm going to try to pick me um, Do you have any that you would like to give away for, I'm put you on the spot, for anyone who's interested in getting one, like maybe one or two for, for the audience that could, you know, because I'm going to put the link in the description. Sure, sure. Well, we could do a raffle or something, you know, okay, however we'll, you want to do it. All right, we'll work something out. But man, this is interesting. I can really see, visualize a movie after this. Any plans for trying to go further and trying to put it into some, you know, some, some, some type of movie or... God, look, yeah, well, uh, I would love that. You know, uh, it, you know, it's got to get traction. It's really hard in this, uh, this this day and age. I mean, I forget what the numbers are, but like thousands of books a day get released. Uh, so, I'm just hoping to be you know heard amongst the noise, and you know, hopefully people you know read it and say you know, oh wait, this was written before the pandemic, as as you said, not like he watched the news and wrote it right. all down. Um, but yeah, it's a it's an interesting story. You know, I. I 
you know, spent a lot of time doing a lot of research about it. So, you know, uh, the people who have read it and given me some candid feedback, you know, said, you know, that the, they, they like the connection, oh, like, you know, you know like, liked how uh, the development of the characters and how, you know, different pieces earlier in the book, you know, tie into later in the book. So, you know, seems I've gotten some good solid feedback about it. So I've been happy. Good, good. Well, I'm glad you chose this show, Third Eye Visions, to come on and talk about the book, which is entitled The Bubonic Reorder. Y'all need to go out and get it. Um, I want you to give me the link so I can put them in the description once I uh, get everything together. But again, you have any, what's, what's coming up next? Any more books you plan on writing or is this just, this was just. Uh, yeah. I mean, this is, uh, you know, th this one has, uh, you know, kind of came out of nowhere. Uh, you know, to, uh, like I said, I was just kind of compelled to write this one. Um, as you know, from our kind of previous interview, I'm kind of really focusing right now on uh, video games. Yeah. V give doing reviews of accessible video games uh, mm -hmm. on the iPhone for people. So I have a, a, a Facebook group that is uh, about that, you know, has uh, 300 members now. Um, and we do reviews of accessible iPhone games. We do interviews with developers right. about, you know, creating accessible games. So, you know, we're just trying to get that out to people, you know, as you know, because I want people who are blind and visually impaired to be able to, you know, have fun, fun distractions as well. well we so. got you on that one. We definitely yep. got you on that one. And, and if you want to know more about that, you can watch the previous video. Okay. Watched. So with that being said, man, I want to thank you. Really, I really, I really want to thank you for coming on Third Eye Vision and sharing that. And we're gonna talk uh, in a couple of days when I, once I get everything straight and get the links and put them in. There. If y'all want to get in touch with Aaron, he's gonna have all the information in the in the descriptions. Y'all go check out his book, which is and uh, again, tell him where it is on um, Amazon and where. And, yeah, it's on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. If you search uh, the the bubonic reorder, um, and reorder is one word, uh, no hyphens or spaces or anything, um, you, you should you should find it there. Okay. Well, any last minute words? Uh, no, please. Uh, uh, if you're looking for a good beach read, uh, you know, I think it's perfect. And if you, particularly if you like kind of a, a mystery slash kind of apocalyptic kind of story, uh, you know, this, this book will be right up your alley. Okay. Well, thanks again. And y'all go get them shirts, man. Go get a shirt, Aaron, and, and, and support Third Eye Visions, baby, because I appreciate you coming on, man. You always have some interesting stuff to come on. You sound very, very, very professional and, and detailed so that's what i like so with that being said y'all <laughs> thanks so right. thanks for subscribing thanks, Anthony. no problem and for, uh thanks for subscribing to third eye visions and continue to do so man i appreciate it thanks again Aaron. thank you have a great day you too. 